Sam Lowe for irishboxing.com. Delighted to be joined by Lily White Lightning, Eric Donovan, on fight week ahead of his fight on Saturday night at the Europa Hotel on Mark Dunlop's show. Eric, first of all, pal, how's things? How are you? All good, Sam. Thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm well, man. I'm well. Yeah, thanks very much for asking. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Obviously, we caught up um, pre-fight for your fight against uh, Robesi Ramirez, which we will touch on briefly, if you don't mind. But um, first, I just want to chat a little bit about your, your fight this weekend on Saturday. You're fighting against uh, Angel Gomez. Is eight wins, nine losses and, and one draw, I believe, on Mark Dunlop's show in the Europa Hotel. Um, yeah, how, how are you feeling going into this one? Obviously, it's a, a bit, bit of a different vibe, a bit of a different feeling from the last fight you had, which was obviously a, a big fight on a big card. But uh, how are you feeling going into this one? Yeah, I feel good. It's a quick turnaround. Like, you know, a lot of people are saying it's quite quick since the last fight. Like, and, and it is in a way. It's kind of two and a half months. Like, you know, so normally... You normally there's kind of you know maybe three or four months might pass between fights, um, especially at my stage or whatever. But look again, I can't be picky and choosy. I have to just take what I you know what I can get at my age. And I've already told I've already told everybody already well that that this is going to be my final year, you know, and I was going to give it everything I had. So, um. It was important for me to to get back in the ring soon and bounce back because the Ramirez fight was just it was a disaster for me personally and um, you know the, when you have to go back to the drawing board and when you have to go back and regroup those lessons are the most painful but they're also the most important lessons that you know that you can undertake as a fighter. Uh, they're not nice, um, but they're. If you want to progress, you have to accept it and you have to learn from it, and that's it. And I'm just really eager to bounce back, uh, and put on a good performance Saturday night, and then push on towards maybe getting another chance, maybe European level. That's that's always been my ultimate goal as a professional fighter, and um, I'm still hoping. Fingers crossed that you know, that can become a reality. Brilliant. I mean, just as you touched on it there, I mean, let's let's talk a little bit about it then. What what did you learn from that fight? And what, you know, you kind of alluded to it being a, a bit of a disaster. What do you think what do you think happened exactly? What what went wrong for you and um why do you think it turned out the way it did? And what did you what did you actually subsequently learn from from the fight with Ramirez? Well I think I went into the ring a little bit too casual. You know, I just went into the ring too casual. And when you're getting into the ring in a prize fighting environment, a gladiator, a gladiator arena, um, you have to bring out the fight. You have to, you have to unleash the beast inside, and we all have that inside us. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, it's almost like I just went in a bit too carefree, a bit casual, um, and was always of the kind of opinion and viewpoint that you know we'd 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 navigate some of the earlier rounds and then warm into this fight and start pushing them back. But we'll stay away from his left hand, move to our left. They were tactics, they were they were the strategies that we had. Um and but like from the opening bell, Ramirez just jumped in to his stride and he started orchestrating the fight. He had me on edge. He had me kind of bit jittery, kind of didn't, I couldn't relax. I didn't relax and I was kind of like, right, you know, and he was just stalking me and um, never read, like that's, I want to give him the credit, like massive credit, eh? world's last opponent. Um, he just never allowed me to settle. And then, of course, I got knocked down in the first round, but I didn't get knocked down. It was more of a, it was kind of a weird one. It was more of a balanced thing, but he did kind of punch me on the shoulder or something like that. It kind of got me on the body or the shoulder, but there was no it was no headshot. And it was kind of a a, a mixed uh, mixed. My feet got mixed up or whatever, and I fell back, and then I got a count for that, which was kind of unsettling and a bit embarrassing. But I was happy to see the end of the first round, and then I was trying to regroup in the corner and get me just get back get my head together. And Packy was saying forget that move on and the uh, second round I thought like you know I just 
started to find my way a little bit better in the fight, you know. I just started to be a little bit more comfortable. But then he opened up an old cut. And then that was, a, the, for me, then that was a nightmare because he was already hard enough to keep track of. Now the blood is trickling into my eye. And then, of course, on the third round, I kind of let rip. I just stepped in and just, you know, let the shots go. Hit him an uppercut to the body, uppercut to the head. But it was very amateurish. Even if you look back at the highlights, you can see me. I'm up on the balls of my feet. And then he just comes and goes, bam, bam, drives me back onto the ropes. And he hits with a lot of force because he has that. He's not your typical counter-punching computer, old computer-scoring Cuban. He's a fighter. He's a fighting yeah. Cuban. Um, and he drove me back onto the ropes. And then, of course, when he advanced and he threw a big loop and left a hook, where did I move? I moved slightly to my right, where we didn't want to move, onto his left. And I, I almost turned my, away from the punch, braced myself, and exposed the back of my head. So it got me behind the ear. So it was a, it was a, the punch was just a devastating shot. Like it really scrambled my senses. Um, so that's the kind of technical breakdown of the fight. But afterwards, I was kind of like, ah, oh, I'm good now because like when I went in against Alpha Barrett, I was of a different mindset. And when I went in against Ramirez, there was I was just there was day and night between both. Like. I was trying to minimize the Ramirez fight with the crowd, 15,000 people and the, the cameras and the Sky Sports, the ESPN and all that. And I was just trying to minimize them, disconnect it, disconnect from it emotionally in a way that I'm just going out to fight another fighter. That's all I was putting it down to. But what I felt I ended up doing was disconnecting so much that I was just almost there, but not there. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah, like you weren't engaged in the actual fight mentally as much as you needed to be to actually perform and switch on, perhaps. Yeah, like, yeah. I was removed the emotion, but that's a bad, that's not really a, a wise thing to do. You need the emotion for that fight. For a fight of that magnitude, I needed the fire, and I hadn't got it. Um, And that, that so that's the learning from that, you know, that yeah. I need, I need to remind myself every time I'm going down to the ring to get in against a fighter, no matter who it is, that you can be the nice guy 24-7, you know, 365 days of the week. But just for this scheduled 10 round or 12 round or whatever it is, you need to switch off the Mr. Nice Guy image and bring out that beast yeah. because this is going to try and take your head off. And that kind of conversational kind of... um tactic I didn't do with myself and I know that that's very important for professional boxing never mind amateur but professional boxing it's a barbaric sport it's a ruthless sport you have to bring out the dog yeah definitely you definitely um you said a couple of interesting things there about kind of you alluded to his quality and how good he was which I think is important to talk about but also you alluded to kind of a few technical things where you maybe still were a bit amateurish in certain ways or you kind of caught yourself when you look back on it being a bit okay that was a bit too amateurish I, I, I don't want to be doing that anymore um do you, how do you feel you've made that transition from the kind of amateur style which where you were you're known for being very good at um and work I think worked for you in your professional career up to a certain point how do you feel you've you've done with that transition and did you feel in camp for the fight that you were making the transition well and it was going well to kind of from moving out of that more amateur style into that more pro style? And then how much of the fight was down to, to Ramirez just being maybe a little bit too good or a little bit too polished? Yeah, look, it's everybody knows I turned professional a month before my 31st birthday, you know, um, and I've been boxing as an amateur from the age of seven. So... What have you got? You've 25 years of being conditioned a certain way. Computer scoring, I come up on the old computer scoring system, southpaw, slick, never a big puncher, always fast, always like um, tricky, uh, counter punching fighter, really. Um, so, third and pro at 31. And link, like, even for the first few years as a professional, I never really changed my style much. You know, even if you look at the Barrett fight, I was still very amateurish. Like, and it worked for me for a certain extent. But when I linked up with Packy, 
I realized that I need a bit more to my game. I need some of the professional tools to get through the deeper rounds and that to be able to navigate my way through the to the to the longer fights. Um and not to not to move away from my amateur, not to discard my amateur credibilities or my 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 skills. Skill set, yeah. My skill set. But to add to them, you know, to know what to, you know, to, to make myself a more uh, complete fighter. Um, so the transition has been slow, but it's getting there. You know, it is getting there. Like Paki has complimented me on my um, my punch and power. He's complimented me on my defense. He's complimented me on my conditioning, how I'm preserving energy now. You know, so, so these are the things that. I was making progress on even before the Ramirez fight too, you know, and that's why I was bitterly disappointed too. But I, I never got to show what I could do in the fight because it was over so quick. And um, now going back to Ramirez, you did, you know, there is an element of that. A huge, a huge percentage of it is down to his absolute class, you know. Let's not forget he's twenty eight in his prime. I retired at twenty eight for three years, you know. So when he was when I was retired at 28, he was 20 years of age. He was just after winning. He was two a year or two after winning his first Olympic gold medal and en route to win the second one, you know. So the guy is just exceptional. Like, and I've never, I've never, sh- never shamed to losing to someone like that. The only thing that I'm disappointed in is, is, is not be, not giving a better account of myself. That's all. But look, I don't, I don't, I don't, lose sleep over it or anything like that you know it's a tough one to take you know but that's the game i'm in it's a professional game and you know um you know a friend of mine said i'm i'm a, I'm a high altitude athlete like you know you're up on the you know you're either going to make a grand uh you, you'll actually succeed on a grand scale or or fail on a grand scale you know what i mean so um the extremes are high aren't they like it's it's extremes yeah. Kind of. Yeah, and that's a good that that was a good analogy at all. And I said, yeah, you're so right, but very few dare to go there. You know what I mean? And yeah, um, so I look, I'm immensely proud. Um, it, it to be honest, it's kind of crazy. Fighters' mentalities, you know, dude. Like we are just cut from a different cloth, you know. Like on paper and the way everything is t- panned out and everything. That was probably always going to be the outcome, but it never stopped me from believing in myself. It never stopped me from taking a chance. It never stopped me from like generating a bit of excitement and and pulling people together. And but you know, and I'm really going for it, but I didn't really go for it in a way like you know because I never, I, I was expecting the fight. I, I I had many visions in my head, and the one that kind of the outcome that that happened was never one of them. You know, so, but look, that's that sport at the highest level and. Um, you know, ultimately I came up short, but I think Ramirez will go on, and I think he'll become a a, a world champion. I really do, I genuinely do. I think he's a class act, and I switch back to European title hopes, and please God, I can get there. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, and he definitely had a, a lot of class, didn't he? I mean, that's something that everyone can kind of say as well. It wasn't like it was. It was a simple like you had an off night and got caught. It was like you fought against a world class guy there, and uh, there's always a big element of that. But um, yeah. So let's let's kind of turn our attention to this weekend a little bit more. Um, obviously, uh, Angel Gomez, a fighter who's something I'm, in, I'm interested from a kind of the performance sport standpoint is it's quite a drop back in level from fighting someone like Ramirez, right? How do you kind of deal with that mentally? How does your prep like? How are your mental preparations for a fight like that, which you're going into expecting to, to to win? I presume quite quite handily, but also, it's like, um, yeah. How is your motivation for a fight like that when you've operated at a higher level already and and so so recently? Yeah, it can be really ding dong, you know. It can be up and down, like you know. It's very easy to get pumped up and. To, you know, to get out the door and go training for a Ramirez fight, you know, with the with everything that at, attached to that fight too, the exposure, the platform, the stage, the you know, 
you don't have to sell that fight basically you know that fight sells itself and then you you know you 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 just have this kind of an automatic motivation mood that just drives you drives you to, to, to train hard but then when you when you come up short and then you're back to the drawing board and you're going again you're having to regroup and come back to a guy like uh, Gomez then it can become hard again you know then you're having to kind of pull yourself up again you know it's not things are not happening automatically things are not instinctively happening for you you have to kind of consciously push yourself drive yourself and that's what I've been doing over the last while. And everything now is kind of switched back to kind of the, what would you say, kind of back to square one. Well, wouldn't say square one, but kind of you're going back to shifting tickets. You're going back to trying to sell the fight. And, and that can be hard. That can be really, really hard. Um, but that's the nature of professional boxing. That is it. Small hall shows, you know, they're the, the life. Blood of, of professional boxing, and they always have been. And uh, and the Europa Hotel is a class venue. I boxed there before. It's a lovely, lovely venue. Very light, lovely, intimate kind of a gig, you know. And yeah, every there's all the seats are great seats, and everybody has a you know, a, you know. I brought a good bunch up there the last time, and people had a great night. And I'm looking forward to doing the same thing again this week. But let's make no mistake about it. Yes, it is hard. The motivational side of it is hard, but if you want to be successful, you just have to do it. If you want to reach your targets, if you want to reach your goals, there is no substitute for hard work. You just have to do it. You can't cut corners. You know, I did that years ago and I got found out. You just have to put in the work, pull yourself up, no matter how you do it. You just have to do it. And this fight, I am expected to win this fight and I am confident of winning this fight, but I will not be taking my eye off the ball because this is still even though I am favoured to win this fight, it's still a very important piece of the jigsaw uh, of where I want to go to, you know? So, and yeah. this piece must be completed. And if this piece is not completed, that's it. That's the end of it, you know? So that's added pressure too. So, um, no, I, I'm ready. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's definitely, a, when you put it that way, there's a lot on the line because if you want to keep going, you, ha- you can't take a ride off the ball for this one. No, you know, no matter who it is, you've got to get the job done. So with that in mind, the idea is to kind of step back to this level, get a win, is it? And then look to push to European title level. Is that the kind of what you see as your kind of end goal now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Mark, my, Mark is always out there looking for fights for me. He's always there doing his work in the background. And me and Paki are working together and developing and trying to get better. and. Um, but we definitely believe that, you know, we can mix it at a European level, you know. Definitely believe I can win a European title, you know, whether it's EU or full European. And um, we don't really we don't really mind because um, obviously I am 37 in July and time is not on my side. My wife is expecting our first child together. Um, you know, congratulations, by the way. Thank you, thank you, Sam. So, that um, Laura's due in October, you know, priorities and all that, like, are going to be kind of different. So, I would love to kind of get myself into a position there. And Mark is working away between the featherweight and the super featherweight division. So, you know, there's hopefully a few possibilities there, but you're right. First things first, we need to deal with Saturday night and then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Well, I will see it on uh, on Saturday night and I look forward to it. I was at Mark's last show up in the Europa Hotel and it was a, it was a lovely atmosphere. It's a nice venue. Um, I suppose we'll finish on this, Eric. What can we expect from uh, from you in terms of a performance and a result on uh, Saturday night? Yeah, I think people can expect a very good performance because it's important to me. It's important to me to bounce back and uh, and to get back on track, you know, to sometimes we'll hit speed bumps along the road. or um, But we can't let them define us, you know. We have to overcome. We have to keep overcoming. We have to keep picking ourselves up and keep rising, you know, and apply that same method to all aspects of your life and just keep rising and keep striving to be better in every way. So. 
that's what I try and do as a person, as a, as a fighter, but most importantly, as a person as well. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use that same strategy on Saturday night and hopefully put in a lightning performance and uh, give everybody uh, something to, uh, a bit of entertainment and something to talk about. Eric, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, mate. And I look forward to seeing you. I haven't seen you since uh, since we caught, caught up in the gym that time, just before the Ramirez fight. So I'll see you on Saturday. All the best in the, I suppose, over today and tomorrow. I hope you rest up well. And I look forward to seeing you fight on Saturday night. Thank you, Sam. You're a gent. Thank you, Take mate. Care. Gentlemen, appreciate it. And I'll chat to you soon.